here you go. Here is what I am reading this week. And boy, folks, I am just so glad it is really becoming intensive reading weather because the temperatures are cool and I just loved it. You can grab a book and you can go head outside on your back porch, your front porch, or your park, wherever. Um, so what I am reading this week, number one, periodically I actually pull the very old books off of my shelf. A lot of times we look at them and we think that they just have decorative value because they are intrinsically beautiful. But periodically I will pull one off and I will read it cover to cover. I did that recently with Glimpses of the Moon, an Edith Wharton book. And the other day I pulled off a, a real classic, Rollo May's Man's Search for Himself. My husband in college was a philosophy major and so we have um, a number of really good and interesting books. It's an easy read. I find it fascinating. And even though it was written many years ago, it is definitely still applicable to the angst of our time. So I would highly recommend that. It is Rollo May's Man's Search for Himself. Now, the next book I want to tell you about leads me to my question of the day. So this was recommended to me by, well, it's actually a recommendation that was on Instagram by someone that I have a huge style crush on. We sometimes correspond. Um, I just, she has inimitable style and, and, and a, a very unique, unique type of persona. And I just love everything she does. So I have a huge style crush on Jill Sharp. And what I, my question of the day for you is, Leah is acting up in the back of the room and her phone, <laughs> and her phone just went off. Uh, okay, but, I, but so that was my question. Who do you have a style crush on? Let me know who you have a style crush on. And if you would, like put their handle or put their name. So if any of us want to research them to see if indeed they really do have great style, then please do that. Because I think it would be a fun way for us to learn about different personalities. So she recommended on her Instagram feed the book A Sense of Place. It just recently came out, design inspired by Where We Live, Caitlin Fleming and Julie Goebel. Now, I, I got it mostly because she recommended it, but I have to say there was an additional, uh, an additional incentive because her home is very, very prominently featured in it. She's got two different locations where she has uh, just really gorgeous, gorgeous home with different styles. One is in Charleston and the other is in Santa Fe and you guys know how I love Santa Fe. So anyhow, her name is Jill Sharp and I would encourage you to check her out on Instagram. She she used to be, I believe, the chief creative director for Ballard Design, um, she, but she's done a, a ton of stuff, and she is just a, a really substantive individual as well. So that is my recommendation. Now, in terms of workbooks, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you to order my garden journal. I got so many comments from you guys last week saying that Amazon was now saying that the release date was late in December. I, I hadn't even noticed that. I talked to my publisher and they said, no, that indeed it, it is not going to be that late, that they are hoping sometime in mid-November and they will be giving us an exact timeline. I'm not sure what the glitch was, um, if it was a shipping issue. I'm, I'm not sure. But at any rate, it is, I think, just a really, really beautiful tome. And I, like I say, I just got a full-blown copy of it, not just not just a stand-in, a mock-up, and I, I now can actually start making entries. And I'm gonna do something kind of unique with mine. You guys are probably gonna think I'm crazy. But I, I really want this to be a working document, a working ledger of everything that you do in the garden. So I'm gonna take mine out with me when I work outside. I don't care if it, if it gets dirty. I don't care if it shows some of that wonderful Oklahoma clay on it. Um, I'll protect it from moisture, but I really want it to be a true heirloom that is passed down to my boys. And so I, I want it to, to look well used and well loved. So that is what I'm reading this week.
I can say is it's criminal that we make a living <laughs> doing what we do because it is just so fun working with you guys. Stuart was just singing some song he made up called Pumpkin Paradise. It's true. Uh, but I digress. Let's talk about our outfit of that day. So you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. My outfit of the day was inspired by my style crush, okay. which I sent you on Instagram. And the style crush her is? Name is? Her Instagram is Abby on the internet. She okay. lives in San Francisco and I just love her outfits and her home and this feels like something she would wear so okay skirt was thrifted these are Birkenstock shoes this vest I got in London on Brick Lane the vintage market is it suede it's, I think it's like leather or suede what is I it I love it yes vintage. you are you are really into vests okay I, we talked about yes that. we talked about yeah. thrifting and I always am looking for, for vests. vests so this scarf Linda got for me from the Hatch Chili Festival. Yes. And, and her, why? Oh, because, well, it has guitars on it, and I play guitar. And also it says, hell yeah, on the back, which yeah. I can show yeah, you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. And this was from, her name is Outlaw Oracle. And she's, I think she's here in Oklahoma City. And your earrings are from yes, her. Yes, and I, I was visiting with her when I went to that market, and we, I, saw that and I thought oh my gosh because whenever Leah really approves of something she called hell yeah and I and so I saw it and I thought oh my gosh it, it shall be hell hers yeah. so I got one of those and then I found a present for myself because always if one for you then one for me and Whoa. I got these skull head very New Mexican these kind of skull head earrings which are just kind of a little yeah. smile gift for yourself. Yes, just a little smile gift for myself. Yeah. I give lots of smile gifts to others, That's but true. periodically one also has to smile at oneself. Yeah. Um, my top is H&M. I got this in Denver. And this is kind of my thing that just because you have a collar doesn't mean you have Ooh, to use it. Oh, I like so, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so if you, if you have a collar, and you, you guys know I usually pop my collar up yeah. because I just... I don't know, I just feel comfortable doing that. But sometimes I don't want a collar. And I I've got ex that. I've got very, very broad shoulders. And so for me, a V-neck is kind of flattering. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to transform a blouse with a collar into a V-neck, I just turn it Cute. under. That's kind of a fun a little trick. hack, isn't it? And I I adore this this color of it geranium so red. Yeah, it does. It does. So this is a linen blouse from H&M. I got it in Denver. Um, this is just a pair of jeans that I probably have had for 30 years. I think they were oh. Land's End or something. But I reliability. did. Reliability. Reliability. <laughs> I updated them um, by just cutting them off and fringing them. Cute. And yeah, I like distressed jeans. Mm -hmm. um, and, okay, now look, speaking of a thrifting score, look at this belt. bling bling. Isn't this, isn't this great? So I got this on that, two of my favorite belts, I got at just a, a little secondhand store Zion, near, actually. yeah, yeah. There's Zion National Park, and I, I love it. So it's a little bit of a bling. And these are, I think we're going to try to maybe do a collaboration with them soon. Um, and these are from Quince. They're just Birkenstock kind of knockoffs, Oops. but oh my gosh, they are so, so, so comfortable. Oh, those are Berks over there. Yeah, These the, are Berks. <laughs> yes, those are real Berks. I have the dupes. Um, so, and, and my sunglasses are just kind of, I don't know, they're kind of 60s I like inspo. Those. What are your sunglasses? These I got in Belgium. And I such I splurged so on them. Belgium. Next <laughs> time I forget what the store was. It was like a Norwegian Mine store. Mine came from Target <laughs> in Oklahoma City. In Oklahoma yeah. City. So there you go. There is our ensembles du jour. Well, here's an opportunity for me to not only share with you what I am listening to, but also really brag on my baby sister, Meg. And I call her my baby sister, but she is really a formidable force in nursing education. She has her PhD in nursing education, and she just sent me a link to, I believe it was a podcast that she was on talking about her area of expertise. It is called Visual Thinking Strategies. It was, it was the subject of her dissertation, and it is merging the science with the arts and how we can improve education by using the humanities. So she takes students into art museums and they analyze and they talk about different works of art and then they apply those observational skills to, uh, to medical disciplines. 
But I, I was just blown away when I listened to this podcast. First of all, I'm, I'm not surprised because she's tremendously intelligent and, and articulate. But I hadn't, and I knew a lot about what she did, but I didn't, I had never really listened to her describing it and its value in the educational community as it would apply to all of us collectively and how we can be more observational and use art to help understand one another in a non-judgmental way, in a way that is strictly, the intent is just to deconstruct, understand and comprehend where someone else is coming from. And that someone else in her context could be the patient, it could be the doctor, it could be um, an anesthesiologist, it could be any one of a number of different medical disciplines. But when I started looking at it through the lens of, oh my gosh, this is how those of us can understand people who think differently than us by asking some very probative, questions that are non-threatening and extremely valuable. So I encourage you guys to listen to it. It is just really fascinating. And again, when you do so, listen to it through the lens of what it can do for you in your life in understanding family members and from a broader context, other people in our communities. Well, what I learned this week and what I've been thinking about is how important the concept, the principle of reliability is. And I talked about it at some length in my newsletter this week. And if you haven't, if you have not signed up for it, just go to www.lindavotter.com and you can sign up for the newsletter. Um, and I, I talked about things that are reliable. Now, why is this, in, this is something that's so important to me right now? because I was thinking about a very, very good friend that I have, and she and I, no matter what, will always pick up, if we see that the other person is calling or texting, we will always pick up and respond to that call or text. Even if we are in the middle of something, even if, no matter what, we will always acknowledge that. The importance of having someone in your life that always picks up because you never know what is going to happen. And obviously, as parents, we typically try to do that for our children. But as we get older, we don't always have a friend, somebody that will that you've made a pact with one another, whether it's a spoken pact or an unspoken pact, that you will always pick up when the other person calls. And the reason that this is has been impressed upon me so much recently is because it is exactly a year, Stuart, wow. since I ended up in the emergency room. And how awful would it have been to have gone to my doctor and they're sending me straight to the emergency room. I'm driving myself. And if I had tried to call people and they just didn't answer their phone, you know, I could have tried calling three, four people or whatever, but, but Stuart answered, <laughs> Stuart answered and my bestie answered, who's also a, a doctor. So that was, that was very valuable. So if you don't already have someone who is so reliable that you can always count on them to pick up then find someone, make a pact with someone. So in the event you have an emergency, whether it's an emotional emergency or perhaps a physical one, that you know that if they don't pick up immediately, they will do it as soon as they notice that you have reached out. Well, boy, this is the part that I have just been dying to get to, or the stage I've been dying to get to, and that is where I am just putzing and puttering in the backyard, staging stuff, putting stuff where I want it to go, deciding where I want it to go, and I'm certainly not finished, but definitely the, the process has begun. Um, before I go any further, a lot of you are still gonna ask me about this clean out valve, and I just haven't gotten around to do anything about it. Um, I've, 
that's a not fun thing to have to do. And I'd prefer to do the fun stuff, or at least things I think are fun stuff. So um, I've donned my, my work apron. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to ask where I got it, and we'll try to provide a link. And as always, uh, always a little luxury is to have a really good pair of cool job gloves. You guys know I love them, and these are very autumnal. So for this job, I am going to put on my work gloves. And here's what we're going to do. So you may recall that, and I still have some of them over here. This is where I had all of my terracotta pots stored. Now, as kind of a, I don't know that if it's a, it's a signature, what's that? Are oh, you waving in the window? <laughs> I don't know that this is so much a signature touch because all of you guys do it too. And so many of us are alike that we find terracotta inherently beautiful. And I definitely do, and I love the way it looks. And I've just kind of had all of these stashed over here temporarily until I decided what I wanted to do with them. But I have decided what I'm going to do with them. And as always, I tried to shop my own stuff. Shop, I shopped the garage, I shopped around to see how I could store them in a way that would be easily accessible, where I could reuse something that I already had and that would be good looking. So here we go, Stuart. So I'm, I'm over here and I'm going to be relocating these terracotta pots and here's where I'm taking them. So let's do a distant shot first and you can see that over here against the neighboring fence that by the way I have decided not to paint. I like the fact that it is just naturally rustic gray and I've decided not to paint it. Likewise, I am not going to in any way modify this old bookshelf. Now, if you go back and you look at any of our videos where we did some kind of filming in the office in the back, Stuart recognized it immediately. This was in the office, the studio in the back at the, at the other house. Recently, it's been in the garage just as a shelf for storage. But I thought, wait a minute. It's exactly the same size, and it would fit perfectly in between these vertical posts here, and it would be a beautiful backdrop for this area. Do you agree, Leah? Now, will these age, and will these also turn gray? Yes, they will. And it will match the gray of the fence, and I will like that. And if they do rot over time, that's okay. I'll just replace the boards, because this is wrought iron, which also echoes some different wrought iron things that I have in the back. So now I am just playing and styling, putting my, putting my terracotta pots like with like. And this one, I got this one in Ireland. That was back before, that was a very, very long time ago. Um, a little happy, happy memory. And then I've just got lots of terracotta pots and I've got some Italian clay pots and uh, just like I say, just kind of a hodgepodge of pots. So I'm gonna put these over here. And this is for, this is for fall storage. And I do know that I'll probably have to in some way modify this for winter. Um, but I think that they are, it's just, like I say, it's just inherently good looking. So I am going to put the rest of the pots. I like this one. You like that? Isn't that one cute? I can't remember where I got that one. Um, and these are great for sometimes if I'm, doing a tablescape and I want to have individual little plants like say a little pansy or um, a little tuft of lettuce at each individual place then place setting then I can use these little pots and they're great for seed starting and things but mostly they're just cute I think so Stuart let's speed this up a little bit so that we don't take everyone's entire afternoon Saturday afternoon and I'm going to move the the rest of those pots over here because um, because I have a table coming for this spot underneath the windows. And I am, so I'm kind of cleaning, doing two things simultaneously. I'm cleaning up this space and I am staging all of the terracotta over there. And then I can have just like a work table or something 
that I can use on this little brick, brick platform, which will be expanded some. Nothing is ever completely finished. So Stuart, let's say we speed it up. I think it looks pretty cute. Leah, what do you Love think? Love it. Let's add some pumpkin. Okay, so there's a couple a couple of other things I'm going to do. You'll notice that we put pavers, which were just wide enough, underneath the wrought iron feet. And that will keep them from sinking in. And what I'll do is once everything's in place, then I'll come back in with some of my signature mulch, a little bit of gravel, cover these up so they will just virtually disappear. And the other thing that I like about having the terracotta displayed like this. It's easy, it will be very, very accessible for me. As you know, this whole area is just kind of a transient place. It will come and go, stuff will move in and out. Um, and I can easily set up like a little table right here, a little potting table right here that I can, I can pot, something that, again, I'll set up and I will take down. And I've got all these nearby. I've got my, my composter, which I don't care. I think it's cute. I don't care if my compost tumbler is over there. And by the way, it's a mantis, and I'll try to put a, a link to it. But now Leah told me that it <laughs> needs a pop of a pop of color. So she went and harvested. Well, you could, you've decided they needed a pop of color. So yeah. how cute is this that you can also just, you know, you can just seasonally stage it. And you can just put, we can put little gourds wherever we want them. Now, it will also be cute, I think. It'll also be cute at Christmas time because just look at this sweet little touch. Cute. I just saw those little juniper berries that had broken off of the tree overhead, and I thought, oh, how cute is that? So we will also be able to seasonally kind of stage these, have some little evergreens in here. I can have shade-loving plants, like a plant it's hospital, my it. bird's nest fern up there. And I think it looks, I think it's cute. I think it's a really nice backdrop. I was able to use something that I already had, which is always wonderful for two different reasons. One, I'm using what I have, which is economic. But two, I don't have to go anywhere to find it. I don't even have to look online. I just found it. This is a pottery barn piece from a million years ago. And I think it looks great there. And when we finish completely zhuzhing this, uh, we'll show it all to you, I guess. We need to do, once we get everything done next week, we need to do an entire fall tour of the backyard.
like this so much and I especially liked it on this most recent fishing trip. I bought four of them primarily because I knew as soon as I got one, Hubs would want one and I've given two of them as gifts and they are called Beta Tong chargers. They come in this handy little carrying kit and they're not too expensive. But what I like about them is that they are two-fold chargers. So they not only can charge your phone, but they also can charge your watch. And I don't like having to take all of those different kinds of chargers. And sometimes like the charger for an iWatch is kind of expensive, Leah, and to have multiples of them can be kind of Kind of a problem so this way you can get this charger i think it's kind of sleek looking and so you can see here it's a nice wallet yeah you can see the silhouette where your eye watch goes and then at the bottom you don't even have to have a cable it just pulls out and you can then charge your phone and then it just tucks right back in there into the bottom of it and then you charge um, the battery charger itself just by plugging it in with a USB-C plug that I do in my charging station but I had this all weekend long it charged my it charged my watch it charged my phone and what I like is it's very sleek I think it's kind of good looking. It's kind of got this brown leather look. Um, and you just tuck it in. Like I say, it's sleek. It comes in a little handy storage case. And I just slip it into my bag, into my purse. And it works really, really well. I, I got one for a friend recently for her birthday. I've had one for a while. I got one for hubs. And then I also got one for my son as a stocking stuffer. He doesn't know yet. So I really highly recommend these. Um, they just are one of those things that's good looking and solves a problem. But wait! <laughs> There is one more thing I wanted to tell you about as a response to so many viewers' comments. I showed, I can't remember what video it was in, but a glass flower frog that a friend had gifted to me. And yes, you can sometimes get those at vintage stores and different places. I could not find a link for a glass flower frog, but I have a couple of these. These are plastic, but basically they do the same thing. They are clear and would pretty much just disappear in the bottom of a glass vase. They're they're not expensive. These would make great little stocking stuffers too, don't you think? Yep. Well, there are things that are little life luxuries, and then there are things that are life necessities. Stuart and Hubs have been on me to order some security cameras, and I, I finally have gotten around to doing it. Stuart is going to help me. Help me hang them and set them up, Stuart. Yep. Um, and this one is on deep discount now. I showed it on my Instagram because when I was hunting for them, I noted that it was 55% off. It was originally $200 and Leah was at $89, I think that it's on sale for right now. I got multiples of them. This is a brand called Eufy, E-U-F-Y by Anchor. And it is both um, a motion, oper or motion detail and floodlight and camera with AI and I think it will be just the ticket for me it will really record any kind of nefarious activity around the house but more importantly it is motion activated which is also a good thing if we are coming and going at night and we need additional illumination so I think this is really important it's not prohibitively expensive and if you have a good friend that will help you set it up then I highly encourage encourage it because I think the greatest luxury of all is to feel safe. Well, when we moved to the cottage on the hill, I transitioned from just a big coffee pot maker to individual cup makers. I bought myself a Keurig. It was black and it just made one cup at a time. And it was perfect for us. Stuart, you guys, Leah, yeah. you guys like it. You'd come in and <laughs> I had kind of a coffee bar and you would make your own cup of coffee. And each cup of coffee, yes, was delicious. But I relocated my coffee bar over here. Partly, I think it was at Leah's suggestion. She said it would be easier to have it over here near the water, um, near the coffee cups, things like that. And I approved and did. But then from a distance, I noticed that I really didn't like the black coffee maker. I really wanted something that would harmonize and just kind of blend in, and I wanted a white one. 
But then I thought, well, that was kind of wasteful. What do I do with the black one? Well, Hubs to the rescue. <laughs> when I told him I was thinking about it, he said, well, I will take that with me when I go on my adventures because I can just plug it into one of my batteries and then I will have fresh coffee in the morning. And I thought, okay, that was smart. And it's just a one cup coffee maker. So we can take it when we camp or things like that. This one I like, and it truly is a little luxury because not only is it white, which was primarily my reason for getting it, but it holds more than just uh, uh, one cup of yeah, water. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, so you can make multiple cups of water before you have to refill it, and I really like that. I used to have a basket here that I had my K-cups in, and it just was one more piece of clutter. And so I saw that as a companion. It had these a storage genie K-cup pod holders that just with adhesive just attached to the coffee maker itself. So it really is, it really is streamlined. It's easy. I just have my coffee set up here um, and it just works really, really well. So for me, this was really a little life luxury that I decided to treat myself to. And it would be really fun if you got this. I think it comes in other really fun colors too. So if, if you want to kind of zhuzh up, I'm all about <laughs> zhuzhing today. If you want to zhuzh up your kitchen with a colorful carrig, then I would recommend it. Now I'm gonna tell you about these again because this these have been so, so helpful. And so many of you have told me that you too have found them indispensable. And these are these motion activated lights. They're just strip lights. And there are little clasps that adhere. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Duh. That, yeah, <laughs> duh. That's actually what it does. Um, but they just, with via adhesive, they just attach to under means your cabinet and they come on and they come off. You can leave them on continually, but I have my motion activated and you notice that as long as I'm over here, it stays on. What I found are these are not only, um, they are just so practical and so helpful, but I think in power outages, which we've had a couple of recently, that they really are indispensable and very, very valuable. So as always, I will provide the links below um, if you are interested in these little life luxuries. Well, to me, the most luxurious things are things that make my life more beautiful and that are very, very practical. And this falls into that category. It is a, an outlet protective cover. And what it does, I think, first of all, let me describe a little bit of a hack. So inside these baskets in my kitchen is where I keep my modem. It's where I keep one of my Sonos because I just don't like all of those um, those appliance-y kind of things to be out where you can see them. But obviously, the weave of the basket is open enough, and so the signal and the music can penetrate it. But look here. So if we look behind this cart, this is what I'm talking about. This is a socket cover, and it goes flat. So it's got a number of, of advantages. Number one, if you had a regular outlet right here, and you had different kinds of plugs that projected out from the outlet, if you had a piece of furniture, it would be very difficult to be able to put it flat against the wall. So first of all, that solves that problem. The other thing is, is it just covers it up. It makes it look more streamlined. And then, Stuart, here's where we need to put a picture um, from the website. It, it comes down via this cord, which for me is then hidden in this basket. And then it's got, um, it's got an outlet. Uh, what's it called when there's multiple outlets? Oh, it's a power uh, strip? Yeah, it almost looks like a power strip. And you can plug in multiple things simultaneously, but you don't have all of those things jutting out from the wall. I liked the first one that I bought so much that I have bought two more of them. I think they're like $23, which is a little bit more expensive than I would have thought, but they are just, they, they just really solve so many problems that I think they're worth every cent. So I got one for behind my big TV in the kitchen and I also got one for my charging station in the laundry room where I really needed those two etagers to sit flat against the wall. So if you've got this issue and you want things to just be a little less unsightly, I just, 
I, I can't wait to live in a world that's cordless. But until then, this might solve a problem for you. Well, I'm sure you guys are wanting to know about this statuesque Carolina Sapphire Cypress. It is a beauty. And if there's any one signature touch I think that's associated with Linda Vodder, it would be topiary. So I found this amazing kind of a hidden gem called, uh, what's the name of it? Sherams. Sherams. Sharon's Garden Center, excuse me, forgive me, Sharon's Garden Center, it's just north of Fayetteville, and they had the most amazing stuff, you guys. It is definitely a destination. I will be going back. Not only did they have lots of different kinds of topiary, but they had a boxwood inventory that was simply breathtaking. So many different kinds of boxwood, so many different sizes, scale, shapes, varieties and they were so so healthy and more importantly oh my gosh the price point was just incredible but this one right now needed to come home with me now she may not stay here she's a triple poodle ball shaped uh, standard she may not stay here I'm not sure where she, where she will move probably I will plant her in this pot again I'm not sure this is a, a pretty heavy gal and and but she probably will be relocated someplace else, I'm not sure. But she is in that color that I am obsessed with right now. And it is this beautiful bluish, bluish gray, which I think looks great in this, in this entire area. Now, Stuart, let's not forget in this vantage point right here to do a before picture of what this looked like when we first moved in, what it looked like when this was nothing but a junk pile and kind of what it looks like now. There are still some things over here that I'll be messing with. Um, the cadence of the, of the stepping stones isn't exactly right, but I don't really care because this soil isn't stuff that number one is muddy and number two that I'm worried about compressing because it's not areas that I'm really cultivating. It's just basically passage area, like if I had an expanse of gravel. So that's what I'm thinking of over here. Somebody made the suggestion that I cut this off evenly and that I use it as a plant stand. Brilliant idea. I will definitely be doing that. Uh, this is a little bit much for me to use a chainsaw on. So I'll have, I will have an expert to do that, cut this off flat, and then I'll have some kind of shade loving plant that is staged here. I also adorned my new pot display with a couple of these lanterns that have these uh, solar operated tea lights in here. They will come on automatically in the dark and I think this whole area will be really, really charming. I still have to get up my outdoor string lights. Uh, I still have some other things going on. Uh, but again, those are just those are just zhuzhing elements that will come over time. The really hard work has already been done. I do want to introduce you to one more blue-gray topiary that I got at, um, at Sherem's, and it is a blue chip juniper, and I think it is just as, just as cute as can be. Just really, really cute. It does, and I put it in, in this wonderful galvanized ridge planter. I got that at Gardner Supply years and years ago. I have it in two different sizes. I have a question. Yes? If they can hear me. Is this normal for this to have a one that kind of comes down? Yeah, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind, kind of, of cool. yeah, that's it's, its yeah, that's its form. It's kind of a weeping form. Yeah. And I think it looks so pretty with his blue point juniper over here. And I still have to do a little bit of work on the Japanese maple. But again, these are all things that I am anxious to do, that I will have fun doing, staging, puffing. Um, I've got a, a kale mum and pumpkin and gourd display that I'm going to be going to be working on out here and it will be pleasant work. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow while I'm listening to a football game. So now you see over here I have pretty much cleared out this space. It looks clean. It looks uncluttered. I am going to be using these, or at least this one, in one of my raised beds in the back. I'll be relocating this. Uh, Leah, I think we need to find a pumpkin to sit in here. 
Don't you? I think that would be very fun. So I will be moving this table. I'm not sure where, but I will be relocating it. And then I will have a sideboard table. This will all be very clean, very uncluttered. And pretty soon, Leah, we're gonna be ready for a dinner party out here. I think actually my first dinner party though is going to be the family that lives across the street. Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, but that remains to be seen right now. You guys just enjoy this beautiful afternoon. I hear people starting to crank up their tunes as they get outside. So have a great Saturday. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Please remember all of the people around the world in Libya, in Morocco, that might need our help. Help as much as you can and be kind to one another. We'll see you later.